Hey guys, that was the Lego shot that I did during my quarantine in December. It took me around three to four days to finish and I used mostly Blender and this website called mechabricks.com. So today I'm gonna run you through my workflow for this whole shot from beginning to end. And hopefully you guys grab something useful out of this and let's get straight into it. So for this project, we need two things. The first one being Blender. Um, this is the 3D software that we are gonna be using. Blender is free, open source, so you can go to blender.org and just download the latest version of Blender. The second thing that we need is an add-on from mechabricks.com. This add-on allows us to export Lego assets from this website into Blender and use it. There's a paid version and a free version. I went for the paid version because there are so many features that made my life a lot easier later on. Here is a little chart that shows the features between the free and the advanced version. I would suggest you guys take a look and then make your decision from there. And finally, I've added some extra add-ons from Blender. This is just to make my life a bit easier when I'm working. This is not something that you guys need. And that's pretty much it, so let's get started. Since I already know that I'm gonna be using Destroyer Droids as my character, I just search on Google to see what kind of Lego sets there are because there are so many different types of Destroyer Droids that has been made over the years. I wanted to find one that um, I used to have, which is this one. And now that we have found it, we wanna go back to Mecha Bricks and try to cross-reference to see whether we can find the same Destroyer Droid model. And luckily, someone did make a version of that. And the artist is called Scrubs, you guys should check him out. And thanks for letting us use your model. And now we are going to go into the editor, which is almost like a 3D software, and export this to Blender. If you can't see the export option, make sure that you're logged in to your account. And then after that, make sure you select the Blender add-on. With the Mechabricks add-on installed and the asset ready to go, we're going to import that Destroyer Joy model into Blender now. And voila, as simple as that. Before we model anything else, we are now going to go through what this character is going to do. So I'm going to create a sphere that basically acts as a proxy for the destroyer droid. Because I'm using just a sphere, it's going to make my animation process a lot quicker because there's only one geometry that I'm going to be moving. Along the same lines, I'm going to create a plane that represents the environment. And later on, this will be replaced by actual Lego bricks. So now we are ready to do a quick animatic slash layout pass. So I'm going to quickly animate the sphere to represent the character and this is what it's going to look like after. Now that we know what's roughly going to happen in the shot, we can go back into Mechabricks and start building the rest of the assets that we need. First thing I'm going to build is the floor. So I'm going to select one of the base plates and then I'm going to change the color. I think I want an, a grayish sort of color. So I just go to the color palette, select the gray, and it will automatically be applied to that base plate, which is very easy. Instead of filling my whole scene with different types of base plates, I decided to only do two variations, mainly because I want to keep the performance of Blender light. And because the character is going to be moving, you're not going to see that much of the floor anyway. So now we're going to add in some more pieces that's going to sell his ball form when he rotates into the scene. In the Lego movies, we want the different forms of the characters to be accurate in terms of we can build it in real life. But for this short test that I did, I decided to not be so anal about that. Also, we use a lot of different bricks to act as motion blur or smear frames in the movie. A really common one that we use are dragon tails. Just from looking at the shape, you can tell that this is a very versatile brick for motion blur. This is a really fun part, so take your time doing it. And then afterwards, we're gonna export this back into Blender. So now we re-import everything back into Blender, and you can see that I imported the smear bricks and the laser bricks. So now I'm just gonna duplicate the base plates and make up our set. I also want to add some thickness to the floor. But instead of just using Lego bricks to fill out that thickness, I decided to just create a simple object and mold it and edit it to the shape of the floor. And then I'm going to extrude it in Z to create that thickness. Why I did that was because we're not going to see that thickness much. And if we did it in all Lego bricks, it's going to slow down Blender quite a bit. So I decided to add some light pillars to the scene as well. I just used a simple cube and scaled it up in Z. 
and then later on we're going to apply a material on it where it will emit some white fluorescent light. In the final battle of episode 1, they had something similar, so I decided to uh, add that in. Yay, now the funnest part, which is rigging. No, not really. <laughs> Here I pretty much just add some bones to the rig because it's not an organic model. We're not going to have to weight paint or anything like that. So I just add the bones according to where the pieces are and where it will rotate. And then that's pretty much it. I also like to make some unique shapes for my controllers. Uh, visually, it makes it a lot easier when you're animating because there's a lot of controls in a rig and making them unique makes it faster for you to know what you're grabbing when you're animating. I usually grab a circle and then just grab a few points on all sides and scale them out to make a compass shape. You can use um, hexagons, squares, cubes, arrows, anything. Um, anything to make it more visual for yourself. And then after, you can just set the joint so it looks like that control you just made. There is an add-on that I would recommend you guys getting called Bone Layers Manager here. Uh, it's a great visual tool for me when I'm hiding and unhiding layers from my controls. So check that out. And here I also added um, some IK legs to the Destroy Droid. This will make my life a lot easier when I'm animating him when he's standing because his legs stay stuck onto the floor when I move his body around. Now my favorite part, animation. So we did all this work on the sphere during the layout process. We should reuse the animation that we did and not waste that work. So what we're going to do is constrain the body control of the destroy droid to the sphere. The destroy droid is going to inherit all that animation. To make it permanent, you need to bake out the body control. Now you can hide or delete the sphere because the animation is already stored within your character. After doing that, we need to pose out the rest of the body to its main poses. So one of the main poses is the destroyer droid in its ball form. So what I do here is just rotate the control so it looks like a ball and add some extra Lego pieces to sell that idea even further. Now it actually looks like a ball and because of the animation that we baked onto the main control, it's actually gonna look like it's rolling. One tip that I have here is to have the rotation X, so the rolling motion, on a separate control. Um, this is to prevent gimbal lock, which is a, an, a whole topic in itself, so I'll leave it for another video. But this stops you from having problems with rotation orders um, when you're animating. After doing that rolling motion and getting that down, I start animating the rest of the shot, which is just going through and you can either do pose to pose or straight ahead. For me, I did a bit of both. I did a hybrid. And right now I'm just cleaning it up, making sure all the animation feels smooth and fluid. Don't stress out too much on animation workflows. Um, there tends to be a debate on which is a better workflow. I personally like to use all and I like to be proficient in all of them because different circumstances calls for different workflows. And to be honest, I get bored using one. So on Tuesdays, I might not feel like doing pose to pose. So I do a spline workflow. And you know, it's supposed to be fun. Enjoy it and you learn more. Now that our animation is in a good place on ones, we now have to bake it down onto twos so that it adheres to the Lego style. Because I'm still relatively new to Blender in terms of animation, I didn't know how to bake part of the animation onto twos. So I decided to bake everything on ones, then hand select every other frame and deleting it. If anyone knows a quicker process, please let me know in the comment section below, because that would be very helpful. Usually people just stop the animation process here after when they bake it down. That is not the right thing to do. What happens when you bake it down is it's going to feel a bit slow and watery. So to fix that, you need to go back into your animation and really push the timing and spacing by favoring the animation to the extreme poses. Here I'm just animating the blasters. I've also rigged them up. And all I really do here for the animation is rotate them and scale them up from zero to one. So when I want them to be visible, I scale it up to one. When I want them to be gone from the shot, I scale it down to zero. Very simple. You might be wondering why the laser color is white right now. 
when we imported it, it was red. I decided to disconnect the original Lego shader because it wasn't glowy enough. So I decided to make a really simple custom one where I just made the base color and the emission color a reddish pink. So now when the destroyer droid shoots this laser out, it's also going to light up, light up his body with a tint of red as well. I kept the lighting pretty simple. I have the two light sources coming from the light pillars, which we talked about earlier, and two area lights, one from the side that you're seeing here and one at the front of the droid. All these lights don't have any specific special features. It's just scaled up so it covers most of the floor and white in color. To create the light source from the pillars, we have to assign a new material to the two pillars. We assign a shader, name it, then we turn up the emission strength and emission color to white or maybe a light tint of blue, but that's pretty much it. Now that we have pretty much everything done, let's make sure that you know our render settings are on cycles and on GPU compute. After that, we can just quickly do a test render to see what it looks like before we render out the whole scene. So my workstation isn't particularly fast, so rendering is a problem. Luckily, I found this website called Sheepit, and it helped me out so much. It's a peer-to-peer -peer rendering platform that is free. All you need to do is contribute to the community by helping other people render as well. Just upload your shot, and then people will connect to this render farm and help render different frames of your shot together. And afterwards, when all the rendering is done, they will send you an email and then you can download all the images that were rendered. And this is what it looks like straight from the render farm. And now let's add some sound effects for the final. Yeah, so hopefully you guys got something out of this, uh, learned something new or incorporate in your workflow. I know this was a pretty quick video um, and there's some you know nuances like animation that you know definitely needs it's a topic in its own. So if you're interested in that, please let us know because we want to know what you guys wa uh, want to watch. Thanks again for watching and we really appreciate all the support. If you like the video, please subscribe or if you hate it, dislike it, let us know because you know any feedback is, is good. Thanks again and we'll catch you next time. Peace.